Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the rugged and dense forests of Elk County, Pennsylvania. Winter comes fast and early here, and the late November chill had begun to settle over the landscape. Tall hemlock and oak trees stood as silent witnesses to the many creatures that roamed the wilderness, from white-tailed deer to the elusive black bear. The dense forests filled with oak, maple, and hemlock trees provide ample cover and food sources for the bears. Oak trees in particular produced acorns, a staple of the black bear's diet during the fall. As bears prepared for winter hibernation, they consumed large amounts of food, making the late fall season an active time for bear foraging. The understory of the forest was thick with mountain laurels, ferns, and blackberry bushes, which also contributed to the bear's diet. These plants, while seemingly insignificant, played a crucial role in the bear's survival by offering berries and roots throughout different seasons. Additionally, the streams and rivers running through Elk County provided a consistent water source for both the animals and the hunters who pursued them. The underbrush, thick with mountain laurel and ferns, was starting to wither as the winter approached, yet it still provided cover for both predators and prey. On November 24, 1906, a young hunter named John Dyke ventured into these woods, not knowing that his faithful encounter with a black bear would lead to tragedy. At the turn of the 20th century, black bears in Pennsylvania were relatively rare, but not unheard of. Pennsylvania's black bear population, though smaller than today, was significant, particularly in the vast wilderness areas like Elk County. In the early 1900s, black bears were still considered both a threat and a valuable resource for their pelts and meat. While most bears avoided human contact, hunters who ventured deep into bear territory sometimes faced dangerous encounters. During this period, hunting was not just a sport, but a necessity for many rural families who relied on game to survive the harsh winters. Bears were often seen as competitors for food sources, such as deer, and as a valuable commodity for their hides. As a result, many hunters, including young men like John Dyke, sought out bears despite the risks involved. However, without the modern safety measures and wildlife knowledge available today, hunters frequently underestimate the danger of approaching a wounded bear too soon. White-tailed deer, a common prey for hunters like Dyke, were abundant in the area, sharing the same habitats as black bears. The interaction between these species was significant, as bears would frequently scavenge from deer killed by other predators or hunters. While bears were primarily omnivores, they would not hesitate to take advantage of available meat, especially in the lead-up to hibernation. This overlap in food sources sometimes led to dangerous encounters between hunters and bears, as was the case with John Dyke. The 18-year-old was already a seasoned hunter by his young age, having grown up in a family that depended on hunting for both sustenance and trade. Born and raised in Elk County, Pennsylvania, Dyke was familiar with the wildlife, that lived in the forest surrounding his home. He'd spent many hours tracking game, and he understood the risks involved in facing large animals, like bears. However, on that fateful November day, his experience wasn't enough to prevent the fatal outcome. Equipped with his hunting rifle, Dyke set out with confidence, unaware that a dangerous mistake would cost him his life. As was common for hunters of the time, Dyke carried no other defensive weapons, assuming his skill with the rifle would be enough to keep him safe. On November 24, 1906, Dyke successfully shot and brought down a black bear while hunting in the remote woods of Elk County. Believing the bear to be dead, he began the process of skinning it, a common practice for hunters who use the animal's hide for trade or personal use. However, in an instant, the bear awoke, proving that it had not been fatally wounded. Before Dyke could react, the bear lashed out with its powerful claws, tearing off one of his arms in the process. Severely injured and unable to defend himself, Dyke was left helpless as the bear continued its attack. The bear enraged and wounded, then killed him. It is unclear how long the attack lasted, but by the time Dyke was discovered, the gruesome scene made it clear that he had not survived. Bear attacks, especially during the fall, were more likely to occur when bears were foraging heavily to prepare for hibernation. 
Bears that had been wounded, like the one Dyke shot, were especially unpredictable. The sow with cubs, regardless of species, is always the most unpredictable and dangerous. Speaking of cubs, our cub tier membership on Patreon, linked below, will give you ad-free early access to our episodes, and the $3 per month goes a long way in helping me continue to produce educational and entertaining content like this. After John Dyke's body was discovered, a local search party tracked and killed the bear responsible for his attack. The bear was found to be in good health, with no signs of injury beyond the bullet wound inflicted by Dyke. This tragic incident left the local community in shock and served as a grim reminder of the dangers of hunting bears alone in the wilderness. While bear attacks in Pennsylvania were rare, Dyke's death added to the folklore of the region, warning future hunters to respect the wild creatures they pursued. The tragic incident that claimed Dyke's life was a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of bears, particularly when they're injured. Reports of similar encounters throughout the state occasionally surfaced, but as hunting equipment and technologies improved over the years, such attacks became less common. After reviewing the facts surrounding Dyke's fatal bear attack, I am left with a few questions for you. Could John Dyke's death have been prevented if more precautions were taken before approaching the bear? What advancements in hunting safety might have changed the outcome of this encounter? How can modern hunters learn from incidents like this to better prepare for dangerous encounters in the wild? I will gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.